This is the flight deck window surround for 001, the first Concorde prototype. In 1968, a French test crew will look through these windows as 001 takes off from Toulouse on her maiden flight. In the factories of British Aircraft Corporation and Sud Aviation, production work on the two prototypes of Concorde the world's first supersonic airliner is well up to program. Much of the first stage of build, machining and fabrication of panels, webs, spars and other structural components has been completed. Concorde manufacture is broken down into sections suitable for road and sea transport. France in yellow does more of the airframe, Britain red more of the engine. Overall there is a 50-50 balance. There are two assembly lines, but no duplication of sub-assembly work. Both lines will draw their components from the same sources. This line at Sud Aviation, Toulouse, where 001 and all the odd-numbered Concords will be assembled. And this one at BAC Filton, where all the even numbers will be built. All nose fuselages, for example, will come from BAC Weybridge. Here a nose fuselage frame segment is being contour milled on a variable angle routing machine. Assembling panels for the nose fuselages of the first and the second prototypes. The flight deck forms part of the nose fuselage structure. These panels are aluminium alloy, as is the greater part of the Concorde airframe. The next section, the forward fuselage, made at BAC Filton. There are two techniques for making Concorde skin panels. Fabrication from sheet aluminium with stringers welded on automatically by machine. Or milling from the solid metal, as in this window panel. Panel assembly jigs, the upper part of the forward fuselage. And here is the lower panel assembly for the same section. In this major assembly jig for the first prototype, the skin panels will be mounted on hoop frames to make up the completed forward fuselage section. Center fuselage, section 12 made at Sud Aviation's works at Marignan, near Marseille. Center fuselage wing assembly, section 14. This too is made at Marignan. Section 14, completed on schedule, being delivered to the assembly line at Saint-Martin. France is making the entire center fuselage and wing of the Concorde. A similar major assembly, section 16, built by Sud at Toulouse. Tape-controlled milling is used extensively by Sud Aviation and BAC for producing integrally milled machined parts, like this wing web. This well-tried technique is used in the Concorde structure wherever extra strength is needed as, for instance, in this huge belly panel. In the background, the billet from which the next panel will be produced. Section 16 taking shape in the assembly jig at Toulouse. The change in the two scenes, shot at an interval of a few weeks, marks the tempo of progress on component build.
another wing fuselage section, section 18. There will be plenty of windows in the Concord cabin. Every seat row will have at least one window. Here, section 18 being assembled in the jigs at the saint Eloi factory at Toulouse. When completed, this fuselage section will be transported to Saint-Martin, where it will be joined to its wing sections being built there. Section 20, built at Saint-Nazaire. Here being delivered to the Saint-Martin assembly line, all ready to be fitted to its neighboring sections. The rear fuselage made at BAC Preston Works, assembling the tail end of the second prototype and the first. The aircraft fin made at BAC Weybridge. Here again, tape controlled integral milling, this time on a thin skin panel. Assembling the fin of 001. Engine nacelles are another BAC Filton job. In the engine area, some use of titanium is made, as in the case of this engine beam support. Assembled in these jigs are sections of the engine air intakes, a crucially important part of the power plant. These sections are only about two-fifths of the entire engine nacelle length. These are the engine nacelles 4001. The engine bay walls are made of stainless steel honeycomb. Development of the engines, the Bristol Sidley Snecmar Olympus 593, is going ahead rapidly. Flight type Olympus engines have already run for long periods at the Bristol Sidley Test Center at or above the design thrust rating for Concorde production engines. The French engine firm Snecmar is responsible for design and development of the Olympus variable geometry nozzles on test here. All this work is for the prototype production. Although compared with the prototype, the fuselage is only six and a half feet longer, by repositioning interior bulkheads, the cabin length has been stretched by more than 19 feet. With airline fuel reserves, this developed Concorde will carry 136 passengers non-stop over a 4,000 miles sector. It is due to go into airline service in 1971. Already many of the world's leading airlines have ordered Concords. Its great attraction is its ability to cut existing flight times in half. So, before long, the airline's exciting plans for Concorde supersonic flight in the 70s will take shape in actual metal. To take shape in the same factories 
on the same machines that are building Concorde 001 today. Concorde is taking shape. 